Hello. <clears throat> Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, I'm talking an over-the-top beautiful summer evening. It is the middle of August, literally the middle of August. It is a <coughs> where are we are we a Wednesday night, August 16th already. 2023 here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, and I have a peach cobbler in the oven, a fresh peach cobbler in the oven, which I do not want to burn while I go off ranting about whatever. So uh, let me get right into it. So uh, <laughs> I guess the uh, the doom. What would you call this? The uh, the the doomer trashing continues. Uh, good Lord, are the doomer doomers uh, on a roll? You know, doomers. We have become. Well, I, I don't know if this is a good sign or not. I, I guess just up until now, we've been completely ignored. So finally, after a good Lord, how long is it? has it taken for us doomers to finally start getting the attention of clueless morons. I think this is a good step, all of this barrage of, uh, of doomer hate going on all over the planet because we have just been completely ignored and there's nothing that a doomer hates worse than being ignored. So. Now that we're no longer being ignored and it's harder and harder and harder not to become a doomer, uh, you're going to start seeing doomers get more and more and more pushback as more and more people realize they're, that we are doomed. There is nothing that's going to happen to change. That ain't going to happen. I, I don't give a damn what it is. It ain't going to happen. More people are understanding it ain't going to happen, and they need to get out there and enjoy it while they still can before this whole shit show comes down. And so, obviously, finally, good lord, 15 years of hard work trying to penetrate the, uh, you know, the, I, I hate to use the word brains of a clueless, trying to penetrate the the bone-thick skulls of the, uh, not just climate change deniers, uh, but now we've even pissed them off, which is, uh, I mean, no, I mean, we've even, I guess we've taken it to the next step, uh, which is a really good sign that we are uh, pissing off you know, all of these people, these apocalyptimists, they say, yeah, it looks a little bit bad out there. Uh, but then, of course, they uh, turn around and, and act like we're going to turn this around with their little green, new green economy and all this. So, uh, gee, what a surprise to find this article in this... Uh, a little mouthpiece for the global industrial economy called the Financial Times. The Financial Times, uh, obviously 100% dependent on uh, an infinite growth on a finite planet. And this is by some bimbo I have never heard of. I have no clue what her resume is. Polita Clark. Polita Clark has this to say about us doomers. Let's see if we have a bio on Polita. Nope, absolutely no clue who this woman is, how she has any resume to talk about anything. But anyway, she is talking about this, at least they're calling this an opinion piece. This is the Financial Times idea of an opinion piece. The scourge, dun, 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 the scourge of climate doomism. Of course, right off the top, 
she misses, what, uh, eight-ninths of the story. Uh, and, and, and on some level, I can, I'll probably agree with the woman uh, about the climate doomism. Okay, climate doomism is one minor brand of doomism. Uh, I, I do not consider myself to be a climate doomer. You do not have to be a climate doomer to understand, sorry. Anyway, the truth about global warming is bad enough. We don't need harmful hyperbole. Harmful hyperbole, okay. Before we get into this, what is your definition of hyperbole? Uh, I have known the definition of hyperbole, I think, since uh, about my 10th grade creative writing class. Hyperbole is not the same thing as exaggeration. Okay, apparently Polita does not know the definition of hyperbole. Okay... Hyperbole, exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literal, literally. Hyperbole is the use, is the use of exaggeration as a rhetorical device or figure of speech. In rhetoric, it is also sometimes known as auxesis. In poetry, in oratory, or in ranting, in my case, it emphasizes, evokes strong feelings, and creates strong impressions. As a figure of speech, hyperbole is usually not meant to be taken literally. So, of course, if Polita had understood the definition of what she was talking about, and she was not a clueless moron, she would have had to rewrite the story. Take it away, Polita. The scorching temperatures have smashed records across the world this year. I have been talking to climate scientists about a question I hear a lot. Do these heat extremes mean we are nearing critical tipping points that, once crossed, will push the Earth's climate into irreversible, uncharted territory and runaway warming? None of the researchers I spoke to expected the record heat to directly trigger dramatic shifts in the global climate system. Some thought the extremes might be a sign that parts of the system were losing stability. It could be, quote, an early warning signal, huh, of more persistent abrupt shifts, said University of Exeter's Tim Linton, a leading tipping point expert. But neither... Lenten nor any of the others thought galloping global warming was about to turn Earth into anything like an unlivable, scorched Venus or a desolate moonscape. Okay, uh, th this talk about the planet going Venus. I, I, I am guilty of that myself. Whenever I mention Earth going Venus, turning into Venus, I am not a clueless moron. Same as a desolate moonscape. Okay, if I say the planet is going Venus, what I am saying is there is a possibility that a few degrees rise over what we have now could make the planet 
and habitable for a lot of higher life forms, including planet Earth. You, what, what, what are we? We're, I, I mean, I honestly don't know. Are, are, is the global temperature, uh, I'm just going to call it somewhere around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, in, in the moon, I'm, I'm sorry, not in the moon, Venus, I think is somewhere around 800, okay? If anybody, any Doomer you hear is, is, sinc is sincerely claiming that planet Earth is going to be the temperature of Venus or the Moon, they are a clueless moron. They are every bit as reprehensible as any clueless moron doomer claiming humans are going to be extinct in, what is it, the next three to, I don't know, three to seven years, somewhere in there, okay? They are clueless morons who are giving a bad name to real doomers. I do not know. I have never interviewed anybody in my entire life uh, claiming this planet was going to be the temperature of Venus, and neither has this clueless woman. The bad news is a lot of people disagree. disagree. We're doomed, said a typical social media post last m month, as authorities confirmed Earth had had its hottest June on record. Rapid warming, quote, will wreak destruction for life on Earth, <clears throat> close quote, long before 2050 warned another after July became the hottest month on record. Okay, I agree, we are doomed. It has virtually nothing to do with, I won't say it has nothing to do, but it has virtually nothing to do with July being the hottest month on record. Okay, that is not the reason why we are doomed. We are doomed because there are eight billion, eight billion clueless morons devouring this planet. Okay, now I don't have the full context about how rapid warming will wreak destruction for life on Earth long before 2050, go talk to a coral reef. There are certainly uh, ecosystems that will be destroyed by climate, uh, rapid climate change and everything else well before 2050. Uh, you know, for Destruction for life on Earth. I guess Polita is reading all life on Earth that some Doomer is claiming there will be no life on planet Earth in the year 2050 because of rapid warning. Warning, one more time, if any Doomer tells you that there will be no life on planet Earth by the year 2050, they are a clueless moron who should be shunned and asked to please take their blathering nonsense out of the doomosphere and leave it to people who want to take this subject seriously and take your crap and stick it out there in the chemtrails. These are not the first signs of climate doomism. U.S. writer Roy Scranton published a book in 2015 called Learning to Die in the Anthropocene about finding meaning amid, quote, the collapse of global civilization. Jim Bendell, a British professor, produced a paper in 2018 
that spawned a deep adaptation movement based on the belief that most of the world would soon face climate-influenced societal collapse. I agree with Jim Bendel that the world will soon face climate-influenced societal collapse. This is climate-influenced. The climate is one little ingredient of the stew that will induce societal collapse and this society would collapse with or without any help from climate change. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Then they talk about all the kids getting depressed. I do not blame anyone who fears for the future today. The number of political leaders meaningfully addressing the intensifying climate problem is pitiful. A green energy transition is underway, but at too slow a pace to definitely stop far more heating. And it is genuinely alarming. All right, Polita has been genuinely alarmed. It is genuinely alarming to see charts like the one sent to me by Colin Maurice, a scientist at the climate monitoring, monitoring, monitoring team in the UK's METS office. Yes, uh, and of course the, uh, the chart she is talking about is Elliot Jacobson's famous chart that has put Elliot, ja Elliot Jacobson getting no no credit in the Financial Times, and here is Elliot's chart right here with no credit. Uh, but just don't pay any attention to Elliot Jacobson's chart. Just don't pay any attention to charts like that, and you will see that doomist thinking is dangerous because it breeds paralysis. and disengagement, which is precisely what the forces of climate in action seek. Uh, doomers are the single most engaged people talking about the climate and all the other things that Polita is completely unaware of than any group of people I have met in my entire life. They are the single most engaged people, the only people on the planet engaged in talking about this. I love this uh, term, the forces of climate in action. We are playing into the hands of the forces of climate in action. Yes, no wonder a growing number of scientists now compare climate doomists. Once again, Sam Mitchell of Collapse Chronicles is not a climate doomist. With the climate deniers who for years sowed doubt about the existence and cause of global warming, Yes, <clears throat> this is Jonathan Foley, a U.S. climate scientist, uh, quote, it's very strange. A few years ago, you had activist climate deniers who were spewing nonsense about climate science and saying, oh, you're all exaggerating this thing. And now you have climate doom is saying, oh, you're all underplaying what's going to happen, close quote. I agree with anybody who is saying that a lot of climate scientists are underplaying what's going to happen. That is exactly what they're doing to say that a climate scientist is underplaying what is going to happen is in no way, shape, 
or form claiming the temperature of planet Earth will be equal to Venus this century or that there will be no life on planet Earth uh, in the year 2050. I think doomists have yet to cause as much damage as the deniers who helped to stall early efforts at early efforts to cut carbon emissions or their modern day brethren who knowingly exaggerate the cost of climate change. But it is not hard to see doomist thinking spreading. I'm certainly doing my part especially in a year such as this when a warming El Nino climate pattern is adding to a baseline of human caused higher temperatures. This is leading to confusion about tipping points and so-called runaway warming. The parts of the climate system with potential tipping points that scientists worry about such as Amazon forest dieback or melting polar ice sheets could affect millions of lives. The risks are impossible to minimize, but they're not at all the same. As a tipping point in global warming itself, which really would make a Venus-like Earth imaginable. Thank you. Uh, to compare the tipping point of the Amazon rainforest, which we have, which we have already reached, to compare uh, the tipping point of the melting polar ice sheets, which if we haven't reached it now, we will in the next five years, is in no way, shape or form, uh, saying on any level that will turn this planet into a Venus-like Earth. Nothing in those statements. If this clueless woman has ever heard anybody making those hyperbolic statements, she does not know the difference between hyperbole and exaggeration. Yes. That is worth remembering. Yes. So as long as all we're dealing with is the Amazon rainforest turning into savanna and the polar ice caps melting and sea levels rising however far, you know, I mean, that's all we're dealing with, folks. A few coral reefs, the biggest rainforest on the planet disappearing off the face of the planet. This is not meaning we're going Venus. And this is worth remembering. So, so is the fact that climate tipping points are now in a race with technology tipping points that could drive spiraling use of electric, electric cars or renewables. All right, better yet, scientists have sharply revised their estimates of what happens if these technologies ever help us get to net zero CO2 emissions. Global temperatures would stop rising in just a few years. Yes, the point is every tenth of a degree of a warming we prevent is crucial. Doomism may feel alluring or even inevitable. Mm. But it is ultimately a luxury that only a few can afford. So anyway, I was going to read the story right next to that one. Oh boy, a uh, title from Live Science titled, We Could Be 16 Years Into a Methane-Fueled Termination Event Significant Enough to End an Ice Age. But I just want to take a break just for a minute. We were, uh, you, you know, talking about um, Elliot Jacobson, uh, who 
all of you know, is a is a personal friend of mine. I have done several videos. I have interviewed Elliot. Uh, I have stayed at his house. I I know the man uh, personally. Uh, he is uh, he is good people, as we say where I came from. So I want to read a comment. <clears throat> Uh, we'll just call this man uh, Bob. We'll call this man Bob. <clears throat> I just watched your 2022 interview with Elliot Jacobson. Although I appreciate Elliot's math skills <clears throat> and wonderful graphs, not to mention his love of animals, he does not have an ecological understanding of the world. I know because I do. And there you go. His opinions on the environmental effects of abrupt climate change are about as relevant as any climate scientist. Which I think a uh, climate scientist views on the environmental effects of abrupt climate change are pretty relevant. Myself, although of course maybe he does not understand this, Elliot Jacobson is not a climate scientist, has never made a claim to be a climate scientist. He is a man with a brain who knows better than I do how to read the science. These people these people, I don't, I guess he means not just Elliot Jacobson, but climate scientists is what he means by these people need to stay in their lane, please. I am no Guy McPherson acolyte, but if a tenured emeritus professor of evolutionary biology does not have an ecological understanding of the world, I'm not sure who would. Seems to me Guy's short timeline does not comport with some privileged people's wishes. And he, meaning Guy McPherson, has paid the price. How about a Guy Elliot debate. Now, I have some uh, private information about uh, Guy McPherson and Elliot Jacobson, which I will keep to myself. Elliot, if you email and me and tell me you, you have no problem with me sharing your story about your history with Guy McPherson, I will be glad to tell the story, or you can, uh, or you can tell it yourself. I'll just bring you on, and you can tell it yourself. But it's not my business. Uh, but anyway, this was my response to Bob. Bob, Elliot Jacobson has more brains in his little fingernail than Guy McPherson has in his whole body. As far as I know. Neither of those men have ever taken one course in climate change. But, well, climate science is what I meant to say there. But if I were to trust one, meaning trust one's reading of the science over the other, Guy McPherson would not even be in the picture. You know, anyone... Uh, looking at the science and telling me that humans are going to be extinct by 2026, by 2030, or by 2050 is a, such an abysmally clueless moron. It's all you can do to ignore them. <clears throat> okay. Guy McPherson's PhD is in desert bighorn sheep management. Whenever I need to manage my flock of desert bighorn sheep, Guy McPherson 
will be the man I will call. Until then, I never want to hear another word that fatuous blowhard has to say about anything. He and his band of, uh, shall we say, acolyte toadies makes an embarrassment of the entire Doomosphere, including you, Bob, me, and Elliot Jacobson. Okay, and after that little commercial uh, interruption, so let's see, there's several versions of this one. Uh, I just liked uh, the fact that this story on life science is right there a couple of inches away from that opinion piece from that clueless moron uh, over at uh, Financial Times. So we've heard from the Financial P Times. I'm not going to read this whole thing, guys. I will just put the uh, link onto it and you can uh, you can take it from here. Uh, and let's just read the first part of this. Uh, somebody named Sasha Pare, not sure who Sasha is. Anyway, we could be 16 years into a methane-fueled termination event significant enough to end an ice age. Methane emissions from tropical wetlands have been soaring since 2006. Well, methane emissions from tropical wetlands and everywhere else have been soaring since 2006 and accelerating at the same breakneck speed as when Earth's climate has flipped from a glacial to an interglacial period. A dramatic spike in atmospheric methane over the past 16 years may be a sign that Earth's climate could flip within decades, scientists have warned. Large amounts of methane coming from tropical wetlands into Earth's atmosphere could trigger warming similar to the termination events that ended ice ages, replacing frosty expanses of tundra with tropical savanna, a new study finds. Uh, a termination is a major reorganization of the Earth's climate system. Study lead author Yuan Nisbet, a, a professor emeritus of Earth Sciences at Royal Holloway to Life Science. These repeated changes have taken the world from ice ages into the sort of interglacial we have now, close quote. But of course, which they don't, I don't know if they mention it here, they, they mention it in other stories you guys have sent me. Of course, now we are not in an ice age, if you will, in the Finger Lakes in New York, we're in a mini ice age, but not counting uh, the Finger Lakes of New York, uh, we are not in an ice age. So if the same methane burps uh, took us from ice ages to non-ice ages, what happens when we have a methane bomb blow off when we're not having a, uh, an ice age? I guess we're going to find out. I do not think it means the planet is going to be the temperature of Venus. Okay, don't think so. Uh, it, it, the methane burp is one more reason we are doomed. It is one more reason that humans and, uh, and all other uh, higher life forms 
uh, will find this planet a much tougher place to be living in down the road than now, although of course humans are the main reason every other uh, earthling we share the planet with have for making it a few more years. <clears throat> okay. Ice Age terminations, or whatever we call this termination, typically occur in three phases. Uh, the initial phase is characterized by a gradual rise in methane and CO2 leading to global warming over a few thousand years. This is followed by a sharp increase in temperatures fueled by a burst of methane le leveling off in a third phase, third phase lasting several thousands of years. Uh, said Nisbet, quote, within the termination, which takes thousands of years, well, in the, in the past it's taken thousands of years, there is this abrupt phase, which only takes a few decades. During that abrupt phase, the methane soars up, and it is probably driven by tropical wetlands, close quote. Uh, methane is a powerful greenhouse gas or released both by human activities, including fossil fuel burning, landfills in agriculture, and natural processes such as decomposition in wetlands. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and now, uh, quote, it looks as if there is a big new methane source turning on, mm, Nisbet said, uh, You know, all of these climate change deniers talking about how it's a good thing that this extra CO2 is making more plants grow. Uh, well, of course, where these plants are growing is in tropical wetlands. And uh, anybody who has ever had a goldfish pond uh, knows what happens when you have too much vegetation growing in a wetland, you have more and more of it rotting and more and more uh, methane being produced. So as global warming and CO2 levels grow up, yes, there are more plants uh, growing and that means more plants are rotting in tropical wetlands. Uh, <laughs> there's no way to, no way to live. Uh, And so what is happening today, uh, quote, the closest analogy we have to what we think is happening today is these terminations, Nisbet said. Yes, this other article calling it termination zero. <laughs> Are we heading into termination zero? I'm sure that clueless moron who wrote that crap from, uh, who wrote that crap from uh, over there in Financial Times has zero interest in interviewing this Nisbet person. I assure you that you will not have that clueless woman interviewing this dude. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up. I don't want to burn my peach cobbler. That would ruin my. That would be as sad as the collapse of global industrial civilization, for me to burn my peach cobbler. Get out there and enjoy all the peach cobbler you can, while you can, because sorry, Polita. Bye, guys.